No foreplay. We ready? We we on. We on. We live, baby. We bike. We back. Somebody missed the cue because I don't know what the fuck they over there doing. And always act like he like got something super I, I don't important understand. on his phone. He he better I, be. I don't understand. As much as he look at his phone, he better be making money moves on his phone. Look. Look, <laughs> when Doc signals JT, yo, 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 when Doc yo, signals yo, JT, yo, that yo. the music is coming. Yo, you do the we back. That's oh it. God. That's your thing. You I, usually, join, I, join, I join in from time to time. But you usually throw a live, like you say, like a regular person, we back. And, and then, then I you, throw the oh, we back. Okay, my bad. You threw me off with some news I had to see for myself. My oh, bad. my God. God, I didn't. Even, I, I didn't even do my little song that's stuck in my head no more because you messed that up. We didn't. That's that's actually a good thing. Yes, we didn't want to hear that song. So how you doing today, fellas? We can start with Ant. Ant, how are you today? <laughs> Ant, making money moves on the on the on the. You got the plug phone. Hey, you already know making money moves on the trap phone. Oh God, no, nah, I'm fine, man. Just you know, it's been a long day, work, whatnot, but I'm here. Okay. That's, that's it. I'm here. That's it. I don't have nothing exciting. <laughs> I don't have no exciting intro. Uh, that's because you got on this old salmon ass shirt. Don't be mad. Don't don't act First like you're just excited. First of all, it's carnation. Oh, it's carnation. Oh. So what did you eat when you got here, Anthony? Oh, I, I'll let you know. Before I got here, I was running late today, ladies and gentlemen. That's Real why, late. That's why Fresh has an attitude. And he's he, he's spotting right now. <laughs> um, but I stopped at our good friends from SIU. Uh, husband and wife duo who own a restaurant on the Greater West Side the of Grand. Chicago. Called Life, Life, mm. nice, healthy alternatives to hood food. Yeah, I like it a lot. Shout out to Joe and Tanya; they always been good people. Um, man, go by there, thirty eight, forty eight West, West Madison. Madison, Springfield, and Madison, right across from White Castle. Right across from White Castle, you you heard fresh with the uh, the West Side coordinates. Yeah, you know what he I mean. had to interpret it you know, for you West Siders who don't know the street. Right place. before, right before the spirits and liquor, right before the spirits and wine place. <laughs> but um. Good, good food, good people, good service, nice space. Check them out. You on the west side, trying to hurry up to get back to the south side because you won't be stuck on the west side. Not too much. Oh my god! And, and y'all, see right and here. y'all can get off right on Independence and come straight up Independence South Siders and get right back on. So you know, good job for y'all. But I, um, how you been, Douglas? I've been great. You know, today was report card pickup. You know, and you know, some amazing. We had a, a really nice turnout, and if you know anything about Chicago public schools, turnout don't be that great on report card pickup. Right. But we did good on report card pickup today. You know what I'm saying? I had some of my high school boys came up to after school because they know I was gonna be up there at the six. But uh, besides that, all good, man. I've been taking you know mad selfies in the bathrooms and stuff, man. I'm back out here getting ready for mad the summertime. Selfies. Mad selfies. Mad selfies, son. Yeah, you had one post I think yesterday with like some fake inspirational quote. It took yeah, everything yeah. for me not to roast you. Yeah, yeah. Something about water. And I was Bro, yeah, like he, he acting like these, 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 you know, I have a complaint. Come on, I'm listening. Like, all you chicks and Douglas who post these pictures with these fake inspirational quotes that don't got nothing to do with your pictures, stop. No, you no, no. It had everything to do with my no, picture. No, it don't. It's fresh. Look, look, look. I said be shapeless like water. If you put water in a cup, it becomes the cup. If you put water in the man, bottom, if you don't post your ugly ass selfies and, but, just, but and just move on, but I'm saying though, if you look at the pictures, I was versatile. I went from the Stringer Bell sweater to the West Side rolled up Scully. I'm gonna just look at you, Dion, because I told I tell him this all the time. Because everything stuff. he's saying don't make sense. Don't make none. It's okay, y'all. It's okay. <sighs> Stop it's talking okay. to me like I don't know, like you don't know me. That's all I ask. Real friend, Dion. How has life been for you? Uh, life, life been okay, man. Uh. I just, I just came from Memphis, Tennessee. North Memphis. Uh, I, I I did make a Memphis playlist. Good job. Uh, Elvis Presley Boulevard. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I was on Elvis Presley, Shelby Drive, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Memphis is a, you know, inter- I hadn't been to Memphis since I was a teenager, so it was different. Um, I went to Gus's, Gus's Fried Chicken. I'll tell you this, that shit is horrible. Trash, oh my trash. god. Trash oh, my trash. God. It had no season. Only season it had was to make it hot. And I was like, this oh, is dumb. This is foolishness. Yes, Where's the it. ketchup when you need it? Yeah, if 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 you like Gus, me and you probably would never share a meal. Um <laughs> We don't eat the same. We don't we don't we don't, <laughs> we don't eat the same beef. Word, Word life. Word <laughs> life. Um it was I you know, I I went to the Lorraine Motel. I, I did make it to the uh, Lorraine Motel. Nice. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's quite interesting. It was a 
is uh, quite emotional because the hotel is still right there intact. They also kept the boarding house up where Dr. King was shot from. That's part of the museum. Did they mark the spot where Jesse Jackson went and hid? Uh, Oh, my bad. They did not. (laughs) But there is a there is a like a reef kind of reef. Mm-hmm. flower thing right in front of the hotel like right in front of that part in the banner so it's yeah. guess this one right there they kept the two cars that's actually right there is right mm-hmm. there um so much interesting history that you don't see one thing that was interesting was this the man got um one thing that threw me off that hotel actually was going into foreclosure in the 90s mm-hmm. and the hotel sold for a hundred and forty four thousand dollars. Wow, like wow. crazy as hell. Um, also, another interesting tidbit: there's a lady outside who's been protesting that civil rights museum in that location for thirty years, and I believe five days. She said, "Wowzers!" And she has a sign up says, "Welcome to the James Earl Ray Memorial." Whoa! <laughs> and she says that uh, pretty much she says that Memphis is a place of severe poverty Mm -hmm. and her stance is so much money has been put into the museum uh she said recently about 30 million dollars and that what dr king stood for he would have rather that money went to the The community community. so that was uh next level um so so much so much other stuff but you know what i I have to touch on this i know people gonna be like yo this nigga dion be on this soapbox shit but but this is real Mm -hmm. So we we're fortunate in Chicago. We we underwent our gentrification, mm-hmm. right? So I, I always say this, and I I'll say this to I'm I'm in the ground. Gentrification only happened two places before us. That was New York and, and Los Angeles. Right. The two places big enough. Chicago, we got it. So it's interesting to travel around and see gentrification happen in other places, and the people don't know. Mm-hmm. So I went to a funeral. The funeral that I was in. Happened to be the funeral home that got Dr. King body ready. So his body was there. They kept his body there for, I believe, three, four days. People were able to come view it. Mm -hmm. Right across the street from this funeral home is a project. And it looked like, you know, it ain't it ain't high rises, but it's like um, row houses. Kind of. It's similar to what the projects look like. In the, in New Orleans, if okay. you ever seen a, a hot release video, yeah, yeah. right? Look like the oh, like the Leclerc courts for all us Chicago people. <laughs> but here's the shit about it, right? So I walk outside, and when I'm in the funeral home, these ladies. So the the funeral home, of course, is family owned. Every black funeral home family owned. They tell me that some lady bought the family out. Mm-hmm. They say who it was. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, this lady, and it's a historical sign. It's a historical site. So I walk outside. If you go to the parking lot of the funeral home, you see the FedEx Forum, which is where the Grizzlies play. Mm-hmm. Right behind the Forum, what's right there? Downtown. Mm-hmm. Then I see Bill Street. And I'm like looking, and but it's everything around is dilapidated. Mm-hmm. And this lady says to me, don't get gas over here because it's the hood. Yeah. And I look at her and I say, this is this is not the hood. I said, I said this is a basketball stadium right there, and downtown. And she's like, this is the hood. She's like, it's people waiting on you. They gonna beg you for money. I'm looking like, yo, this ain't the hood, right? And I was like, yo, I, and and I jokingly said, I, or I said, I think she thought I was joking, but I was like, you might want to buy some property yo, right over here because right. this. I said, you probably want to buy that purple building on the corner that used to be the bar because mm-hmm. somebody's gonna buy it. And then Bill Street is also like two blocks away. Right. And if you know what Bill Street is, you know the Mississippi right there. Yeah. And I was like, you know how much white people love to live by water? They love to live by water more than us. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like, yo, all the the black people here think this is the hood. And the white people in 10 years about to hide that shit all with $400,000 condos, townhomes, living right by the basketball stadium in downtown, and we're going to be like, how did that shit happen? Yep. Easily. Landslide. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Literally. Landslide. Literally. And then it was funny. I went to the gas station right across the street. It's some shit that say the the like Memphis revitalization project. <laughs> in other words. <laughs> in other words. In other words. In other words. And it's crazy because we know, like you say, we know that and we've been through that and we know what's happening. Right. 
Now you think you should use your knowledge of what's gonna happen to go buy some property in Memphis? Right. I should. I should. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I should just buy a plot of land and just hold that shit. Just hold it. Let me. Just, I, I think. Yeah. I, I think. I. I went to my ref and haven't seen a plot for about six thousand. I may just say, "Give me that. Hold it." Somebody gonna say, "Who owns this plot?" Yep. Um. But we'll, yeah, I mean that's. We'll that's, give them. We'll give them forty for it. You know, and, and I tell you this: Tennessee is a hot zone, and and. I don't want to talk about this too long, but my I got a my old boss at my current company. He lives in Nashville. Mm-hmm. He said his houses by him that have shot up and I sell for half a million. Mm. He said people are buying the house for half million, demolishing that half million dollar home, <laughs> and building two houses on the plot of land. Wow! And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this shit is. And, and, and sort of right, and, and and he a white guy living in a predominantly white neighborhood, so it's like it's really you know granted quote unquote I know we gonna feel like it's about color, but it's really about that money, and mm-hmm. I'm like if 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 we invest if everybody who got a sizable tax refund bought them, you know, bought a plot of land, <laughs> right where I talked about, mm-hmm. trust me when they come for it, <laughs> you will be ready. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like mm-hmm. ten fifteen tax returns in one. But yeah, that's that's it, man. That's 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 how I've been. <laughs> that's how I've been. Thinking. A there thinking man's go. game. A thinking man, chess not checkers. You know, me me and my good friend Real. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> me and my good but it's now it, that we said his name. <laughs> now that we said it. But but y'all talked about too, I said that's the thing. Like, you know, the people who control the money in the world and and in the United States, but the world really, you know, they playing in fifty, you know, I'll say 10, 25, 50, 100 years ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, we think we're doing something because we got a five year plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, nah, nigga. No, my, no, my boy. <laughs> right. No, my boy. No, my boy. No, my boy. Um, but I, I I do got a question, man. Something something has been, been weighing heavily on my heart. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. Come on. So we're going to start off like this. Uh, we usually do relationships at the end, but this is this is real. Carrie Hilson. Hey, uh, baby. Sister Carrie. Hey, baby. Sister Carrie. You know, Sister Carrie's fine. She fine. Fine you know, in the frog. I'm not going to lie. I feel like she's been falling off recently, but you know, that's just me. Uh, she's been looking real like, I don't know, but she she lost her edge, I should say. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, so she went from a 9.8 to like a, 9. a solid 6. 9. She, think, she just got a little older. She got a couple of old lines. You know, I, I wouldn't even say that. Like, the older women, I still they still find a way. Like they still you know, push through. Yeah, they still Jada still push through. Oh, she's come still through, Nicole through. Murphy. Come through. <laughs> right, right. They still push through. But Carrie Hilson, you know, uh, she's been on the internet and and she put a post up. All the women shared it on my timeline. All the women. She says, "The whole ride or die concept rubs me wrong. Mm. Love is not a concept to see how much pain I can withstand." How many burdens of your boyhood I can carry for your comfort despite mine? How many untrustworthy situations I can jump over with an uncertain hope that maybe you'll grow out of putting us in them? How many of your satisfactions I can facilitate while mine are left unaddressed? Mm. Queens, don't enter that shit. We gonna get to this finish line with equal effort. Carrie Hilson said that put that on the internet. All the women went crazy. They shared it. They, yes, they yes. Loved I'm it. not yes. holding a strap for nobody. I'm not Whew. holding no gun and no packs for nobody. <laughs> but uh, uh, any, any thoughts on that? Yes, I was about to say. Let me, say, kick, this let me, say, let me kick this off. Let me kick this off. Yeah, go ahead. Because you know what? It's, it's amazing to me how y'all know I'm a big advocate for all these women. I told them before on Facebook. Y'all the main ones talking about, oh, it's so bad in Chicago and all this. But you only drink, you only date drug dealers and known felons. So, you know what I mean? So, it, it's kind of, you know, ironic or hypocritical for women to, to do, dive at these situations when those are the only kind of guys you attract or you only kind of guys you want. So, if it takes care of Houston to tell him, don't be a ride of that chick for them not to put the house up for Ray Ray Bond again, then I'm all with it. I'm all with it. I, I'm not. A, I'm, I, I wasn't going. That's, that's a great spin. I yeah. like that. I like. I that. won't that's go jump on it like like that. Though. That's a great spin. Okay. 
Oh, look at that. Look, look at that face. That face just. Uh, I, mean, I, I guess. I'm mean, like, that's common sense to me. Like, you know, don't put yourself in legal <laughs> trouble right. for a man. But was she really talking about that? Or well, I feel like she nah. was trying to dig deeper right. into some type of shit. Like, I don't know. Like, women, I don't know. Cause a lot of times women say that you know they get give up the best years of their life while they wait for a man to quote unquote mature mm -hmm. or what have you mm -hmm. i you know <laughs> no everybody talks about like what a woman gives up and like ignores like a man's feelings what he has to give up what he has to put up with what he has to deal with as far as relationships and you know it gets so one-sided it gets annoying as hell and go oh, ahead yeah. because it's just I know, it's just it's dumb to me like it's, it's not dumb but it's dumb like okay of course you don't want nobody to be right or die for anybody you don't want nobody to constantly take advantage of you but everybody always talks about you know are, are we going to be right or die or are we going to work through problems mm -hmm. and i feel like we're at a point now where everybody doesn't just want to see the middle ground of like working through things in a relationship working through things in a situ situation shit, what have you mm -hmm. but now they wanted to be one or the other where it sounds like she's saying oh one or two things go wrong sis move on right mm -hmm. but like you know and that's coming from a point of view like that women can never do wrong like right i don't know exactly but i'm i'm glad you said that mm -hmm. because I, I i i had a recent incident where i was in um i was actually in a hospital Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was I was visiting, and I was talking and, and just having a conversation about relationships. And one of the nurses came in, so I'm talking to my aunt, one of the nurses, and, and then I, I said, you know, the thing is, I said, I asked them because they were both in relationships forever. I said, have you did you ever recall asking your husband was he happy mm. in your relationship? Come on, somebody. Like, have you ever just literally looked at your husband and said, are you happy? What can I do to make you happy? And she and my my aunt, you know, me and my aunt, like, geez. So she honest. She was like, nah. So then this other lady walked in the room, and my aunt was like, yo, like, I never thought about that. She thought it was some profound shit. So she asked the other lady who was the random, the nurse there with five kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the nurse said, she said no. And she said she never asked him. And I believe they all got the same daddy. And what's funny, she said the only time she asked her guy was he happy in his relationship was after it was over mm. and i think i think there's a big thing about that like nobody's asking like and and i say i say this i even ask our listeners have you ever just asked your man are you happy or, or what in the relationship what would happen that would make you happier mm -hmm. and like asked in a genuine way not like the bullshit way right. um because i think i think what what carrie's saying to me um, it's not something to disagree with, but when she says something like how many burdens of your boyhood I can carry for your comfort despite mine. Mm. And my thing is like, so the, her whole statement is almost saying like women are absolved of any kind of like, wrongdoing. you know, wrongdoing or any type of, you know, type of shit she may come in a relationship with, you know, like a lot of women, you know, and I can tell by this post it's almost as if like women kind of act like they come into a relationship every relationship with a clean slate if you ask women they'll tell you that they healed and you know they didn't pray it up and they just ready for a new one and you be look you be dating and you be like nigga i'm i'm still dating a girl that's still hurt from the nigga from 2007 <sighs> it's that, rough man it, re it reminds me it it reminds me of Chris Rock's stand-up tambourine. Yes. And yes. A, the controversial joke that people were, like, bent out of shape about when he... Uh, forgot exactly what he was saying. I was trying to look it up. Mm -hmm. Where he was like, um, no one cares about a man's happiness. Right. Or something like that. And so, that's funny because then a lot of people were like, no one cares about a man's happiness. But men have run the world and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, come on, genius. It's not in the sense of world domination, but, right. like, in a, like you yourself a personal just a family unit type sense right and as that's crazy that you asked that question because it made me think like through you know my past relationships and you know my past marriage has anyone ever asked me 
was I happy? And right. I wasn't asked that question till the end. <laughs> right, right, mm-hmm. right. And you know, and that's, that's real spit. And I, I, you know, I see this now a lot of times where, you know, women would tell you like, "What's wrong with them?" or "You hurt me. You did this. You did that." And then when you say something like, man, like, oh, something's going to be like this, like, you know, I'm going to feel a way about it. Oh, you'll be fine. Oh, you'll be okay. Yeah. And it's like, right. you know, I'm not soft, but, like, I'm human just like you. Right. I got feelings just See, like you. That, that's like, what... I care about the situation just like you, maybe even more. But you, I think some people use it as a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Some no people you, Some people use the fact that. They want to tell you that you don't care as much so they won't feel as bad about the bullshit that they yeah, do. Right. Yep, 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 right. yep, yep, yep. Always. I I, I definitely uh I definitely felt that in a past in a past situation I had where I looked up and it was like, you know, the sentiment was kind of trying to be pushed out like, "Oh, you don't care, you don't care." And then even afterwards, you know what I'm saying, after the relationship ended or, or the relationship in a, in its stage where where i was kind of the happiest and she, i felt she was happy too once that ended and went to a different stage like that post dating weird we going out we hanging out stage it was kind of put like oh like you cool mm-hmm. and it's like no i'm no, not cool i'm not like, I'm, I'm not, not cool. i'm not cool but but see as a man that's soft right for you not to be cool you supposed to be the backbone you supposed to wear the pants you supposed to do but i mean like like aunt said like I have feelings about certain situations too, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, and I don't want to feel like, you know, I don't want to put it out there, but I, I've, I'm i trying to think of a time have I ever been asked, are you happy? Not like happy, like how was your day at work or right. these right. Uh, cheese eggs I just made you, but a genuine like, how's life? Are you stressed out about anything? Is anything eating at you? Like, Right. Hmm. Is, there, is there anything in our relationship that, you know, is that can be that can be improved, like right, and and I think a lot a lot of times people are just you know, a lot of times people are um, it's a word I'm trying to find I can't find it. It's like when you being catered to, what, um, oh, you know, damn, we all to yeah, yeah, we, but 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 you, but you know, it's it's like a lot of times like being like women are kind of told that just a mere them being in their presence is good enough and it's crazy because like we talk about the ratio all the time but then it's like mm-hmm. but then they flip it's good i should be here so you should be happy enough or <laughs> you know or it's from cultural happy wife happy life yeah, always right? and it's not happy spouse happy house right Ooh, no one come says on, that man. Come on, Aunt. Right. I've Could, never heard that, Aunt. Matter but, of fact, I've never heard happy spouse, happy house. Hey, right. we coining that. Come on, hold this goes on the head. We coining. You're putting that on the shirt. Yes, sir. Because hey, it's crazy because, like, you be sitting there looking at women, they tell you this shit, and it's like, Wench, we I went on the same date you went on. I've had the same moments that you shared. Right, right. I was happy at those same times. Why would I care less? Right. If we were in it together. Because yeah, cause the thing is, the whole dating dynamic is kind of built to say, that from from the first date, from the time y'all meet, the man is conditioned to bring something to the table at mm-hmm. all times. All right. right. Yep. So when when you if you're trying to get a number in the club, what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to buy a drink first, right? Mm-hmm. You're supposed to buy a drink first. You're supposed to be polite. You're supposed to do all these things to even just get your foot in the door. It's like damn, like a job. Mm-hmm. Right, so you know, I gotta come this way. I gotta come mm-hmm. correct. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. These are all these things that you are have to do to even get in the door. And it's like, you know, so you you and literally, she just has to show up. At every one of those junctions, she just has to show up and give approval. Yep, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. And, and, and that's the mind frame. And it's like, you know, for for a lot of the shit, you know, we don't mind because you know. That's just how it goes, so to speak. But at right. the same time, to just take that part for granted that we're just just cool with everything all the time, yeah. right? And then when we finally blow up, oh, I didn't know you felt that way because you never asked. You know what? You just always assume, and you know, it's. I just hate the part where it's like you know, don't be a ride or die, sis. You know, don't you know, <laughs> don't do it. And it's like, okay, fine, but don't act like everything, nothing is never your fault. Like, don't go through life thinking that if in a relationship that, oh, I'm mad at him. Like, yeah. I'm about to get a little too personal. But, 
But, I, but I understand where you're going with this, Anthony. Yeah, I understand it, what you're going. Because some women will take this ride or die to extreme. Because all of them ain't messing with no hood niggas. You know what I mean? But some of them might tell you, I'm not your superwoman. I don't have to cook every day because you tell. I, I, I understand. I, I, everything ain't. Everything ain't hardcore. Everything ain't. Hardcore. So this ain't just for the women who mess with hood hood niggas. In other words, nah, is what Anthony nah. said. Yeah, no, this was this not even a hood example. It's right. just more of a That's like, just, yeah, it's just more of a. I think women are emotionally selfish a lot of times. Who? Yes. Like they yeah. had, they feel like they have the, the the, the ownership of the pissed off emotions in a relationship. They have <laughs> the the own like the ownership of like the annoyance. And right. like, I remember I asked a right. Facebook question. Women, when did you realize you were annoying? <laughs> and a lot of a lot of women answer truthfully, that. but I, I saw a lot that. of women who are annoying as hell didn't answer at all because they know the truth, <laughs> but they don't want to say it. And it's like, you know, it's a full-time job to come home and deal with some of y'all attitudes. Full-time. Mm. Mm. And, you know, like, I get it. You know, you're a woman. Like, you don't have to not have attitude. Like, I'm not saying be a robot, but, like, some of y'all go to the extreme, like, I'm a bitch, and that if anybody gonna deal with me, they had to just deal with the fact like, that I'm a bitch. Like I said, with this whole new trend, and uh, it's cool to be petty. It's just gonna be you, your son at football practice and at Ultima, right? And Come that on. my my son and my my son is my king starter kid. Like, exactly. <laughs> With with the short hair, dude. Like, come on, with the like, short hair, dude. Like, fuck out of here. If y'all ain't seen that meme, uh, I'm I'm talking about a meme. Nobody take this person. It's a meme. It's a meme. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. My heart just skipped the beat. My heart. It's a meme. I'm sorry. Lance um, Romance just pulled up from half, and I thought oh, he hit man. that shot from half. Oh, man. But uh, I'm away from it. No, no, it, 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 that, that's real talk. Like that emotional ownership that women think is all on them, and we have no claim to it. It's like ridiculous. Oh yes, no, no doubt. It's, it, it's, it's ridiculous, and you know. If people just look themselves in the mirror and just realize like the parts of them, like I, that was like one of the hardest things I had to do. Look myself in the mirror, and be like, "Yo, what parts of me are not like an, attractive to a woman?" Right. Mm -hmm. And you got to be real with yourself, not the little bullshit like, "Oh, I didn't wear these pair of J's that day, man." Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. like right, the real right, shit, right, like right. you know, like I procrastinate. When you want me to do something, it may take me two days to take out the trash. You no know, mm -hmm. things like that, like right. that are just not attractive. And I don't think you know. Women are taught a lot of times to like, like, like you said, when you show up, that should be enough. Yeah. Right. And it's not like we're trying, men are not trying to get out of working to right. get you, right. but we're trying to get you to, to elevate you. Like, right. Cause she said, it's not a competition. I chuckled to me. It's not necessarily like a mono e mono competition, mm -hmm. like woman versus woman, but you right. should strive to have a competition with yourself to be the best person you could be every day for you Damn. and your mate now that that's hard that's hard that's that's, that's, real. that's a hard quote that's a hard that's quote. real you know <laughs> like you man like women out here like you know you going on you doing the same thing with your guy going through the same experiences and you feeling the same feeling this love this high and you turn around and say oh but you don't care like wench i care a fucking lot <laughs> a mm. lot actually but mm. you know Y'all got the answers. Yeah, I, th I think Carrie need to come sit with us. Cause one time, she, one time, one I time won't be distracted. Sit with us, sit with us and stop, and, you know, stop letting them demons from Serge Ibaka spill over to the gram. Oh, Sergey, <laughs> on, sis. Sergey, yeah, she like wants, she want that Congo prince back. Right, Wakanda, <laughs> Wakanda, oh, Mbaku. You know, I, I forgot to bring something up. I forgot to bring something up. Right. So I always be dropping little shit in there, and, and I always try to get y'all some 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 random little game, whether it's some music to listen to, whatever. Mm -hmm. So here's a life hack that I found, and I use this life hack all the time. So I know it's cool. Everybody buys shit online right now, and it's just what we do. So I know we so used to buying shit from our phone. There's an app. Well, not an app. I'm sorry. There's a plug-in for your browser mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. called Honey. Mm -hmm. sure. And let me tell you something. So I, I use Honey. I've used it a few times. And what Honey does is kind of Honey just scours the internet looking for promo codes. So nice. when you go to a site to buy something and you get to that checkout page, it'll say, hey, Honey has potentially 30 codes for this page for this retailer 
So it'll it'll say, do you want Honey to run? Honey Mobile, is it? Um, I don't. No, no, no. I don't use Honey Mobile. I've never used the mobile. I've only used it on the regular computer. Oh, okay. So what Honey does on the checkout page, Honey essentially kind of runs, and it essentially like tests all the promo code on the page versus the price you already have in there. So you can sit there and watch that shit literally run through 30 codes. Damn. And you can see the price in the background letting you know if the price is going up, how it's going down, or whether it stay the same. Honey. So they find the best one, apply it to your order, and then they just say, hey, are you ready to check out? Mm-hmm. The flip side of that is this. Honey takes a tally of all everything you spend, and then it signs you up for a cashback bonus between 1% and 5% per retailer. Hmm. So not only is it saving you money, that shit is also giving you back like bread. Money on top of that. Right. And like cool. today, you know, it was something I was looking at. I was trying to decide whether I want to buy it. Um, and I was on the Adidas site and it said, Would you do you want to test the promo codes? And the price was like eighty five dollars. Yeah. I hit the little button, test it. Next thing I know, seventy one dollars. Oh, nice. Look at God. I'm with I'm it. like, look at this. It. So you open this up in a separate browser? No, no, no. It's no. a plug-in. Yeah, it's so a it's plug-in. a plug-in on the yeah. browser. So, like, right now my browser, Safari, I got two two plugins. I got Amazon Prime Active and I got Honey. Mm-hmm. So, literally, every page I go to, Honey, know I'm on that joint. Like I said, once I get to that checkout page, it say, hey. Hey, we got something for you, DR. Right, right. <laughs> right, hit us up before you, just, before you just check out just randomly. It pop up like, hey. We might help you out, bro. Things are looking up in Wakanda. Yeah, yeah, in <laughs> Wakanda. Yeah. Hey, yeah. speaking of Wakanda, I got a quick question, fellas. Uh oh. You know, I'm scared. I'm King scared. B, I mean Queen B, just did Coachella. Yes. There's been a lot of debates and arguments or whatever. You know, has she surpassed the King of Pop? I want to know how you guys feel about that. Has Beyonce surpassed Michael Jackson? Fuck no. Dion, you say fuck no. I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna give people this, and this is real. This is real shit. I really do like Beyonce. I, okay. I even go as far as say I'm I, I say, love let's, Beyonce. Let's 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 preface preface right. this before we start. We right. three male Beyonce I, fans. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, We're not Bayhive, but we do I, honor yeah. her work and listen yeah. to her music from time I, to time. Yeah. I, I, I'll say this. I love Beyonce, but I'll say this. She has not surpassed. I, and I, I've seen her in concert. Mm-hmm. She hasn't surpassed Prince Rogers Nelson, uh, let alone uh, Michael Jackson. Like, mm-hmm. now, now, granted, I've never seen Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Never seen him. But what I will tell you, I, I can I can talk. We we can talk about Prince forever. We have a show called The Purple Show. Just yes, go back. But Prince was so electric mm-hmm. in that show, and just this one little man, the the United Center. Think of going to the United Center. Think of the whole Bull Stadium just being the Prince. Oh my god! The symbol was his stage. So I I mean I could give you highlights of that concert, but I don't go back and listen yeah. to that show if you want the highlights of that concert. But just him and the way he performed, it was so dope. Not to take anything away from B. However, I think what kind of happens is, you know, everybody wants the people that they saw and grew with to be the best of their time. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. And, and you know, that's that's what we saw. So, so when we see that and you look up and you say, oh, man, you know, this person's better than that person. It's hard. Like, you know, it, and it's hard for me because out when you go back and, like, you pull up the Michael Jackson concerts from the 80s and you look up the 80s, the 90s, and you see Mike performing in, like, you know, Tokyo in front of 80, oh 90,000 oh and, you know, people dying at the airport, not dying, but literally falling out at the airport, you know, collapsing, screaming for mm-hmm. Michael. Those aren't plants. Like, those, these are real live people who did this over Mike. You know what I'm saying? And when you see a Prince concert and you see him walk around in a Prince concert, to me, I like a circus. You, you'll you see Prince and he'll have easily 50 people in his show, like yeah. going on and off the, at the stage at the same time. Mm-hmm. You'll see him play different instruments. See, see Jerome slide across the stage. <laughs> Man, and he does 100 things. And, you know, he'll randomly have like Let Us See Sing Backup for yeah. him. Like, yeah. Just Janelle random, Monet pop right, out. And- random stuff. So... I get it that we do love Beyonce, but you know, one one thing somebody said to me 
um, one of our listeners said this to me, and it was, it was very real. Um, the night that um, when Cardi B dropped, right? Mm-hmm. So Drake dropped that night, mm-hmm. and you know, it was all, it was a think piece that night that said Drake sabotages Cardi B, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And you know, literally, my homegirl said, "Man." I can't wait to the part. She was like, "I wish we didn't always have to pit greatness against greatness." Yeah, man, that and that's my biggest thing. Like, why do we have to compare? See me, see me. This is my my area. Like, I I love comparing anything because I look at it like a litmus test. Like, we don't we don't know how good someone is until we put them up against someone good. To me, like you. You can't be in the same lane as somebody and not get compared. I mean, anything you do, if I walk down the street and there's someone walking next to me, I'm probably thinking, hey, I got to beat them to the stop sign. You know, it's just it's just whatever I do in life, I compare myself to. I'm sorry. Maybe this is, not me. Right. Maybe this is just me. But, like, with Beyonce, to me, I like comparing Beyonce because I look at her, like, performance-wise, I, I don't know if she can be touched. Like, like you say, though, Prince – Prince is a motherfucker when it comes to performing. You don't know who will drop out, pop out the stage, anything. But with Beyonce, it's just like she does so much to be in in tune. Like to do lift every voice and sing at Coachella, that's like fuck the world type shit right there. Like same way when Jay did uh, Wonderwall at the at the uh, festival when they told him, oh, you shouldn't be headliner because you're a rock, you're not a rock star. So he came out with the guitar and did Wonderwall. And I, and I feel like her doing Lift Every Voice at, Lift Every Voice and Sing at Coachella, then having all the marching bands. It's just stuff like that that, you know, makes me even put her in the same light as a Michael Jackson and a Prince. I get that. The, the one part is weird to me, like, Nobody's going to compare me to somebody who walked down the street in 1978. Right. So I guess the thing about it is we, we don't know. We can't say what somebody did or didn't do Mm -hmm. because also we we don't have all the footage. You know what I'm saying? And, and and see it beyond and getting to that point uh that, that gives, that gives me that to me, that gives Beyonce a edge. Like being a PR person right now has got to be the worst job ever. To me, because wow. with social media and you 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 maintaining a brand like every day, 24 seven, you know, with right. social media compared to think about this Webster uh-huh. set on Michael Jackson's lap. OK, if that happened this day and age, if Kevin Hart was sitting on Jay-Z's lap, could you imagine uh-huh. how the world would blow up? What would go across Twitter and. No, it's not like that. As a, you know what I mean? I mean, like from a PR standpoint, you have to mend those fences. It, no, that, that's not even what I mean. So okay. I'm, I'm talking about like concerts, right? Okay. So like we don't have every Marvin Gaye performance, right? So we, mm-hmm. we don't know if Marvin yeah. Gaye had a performance and decided to just, you know, randomly. We don't know if he tested out, let's say, oh, his Ray version Charles of Star, Star Sangle Banner. Right. So we don't know if he hit that joint at a random concert like we do we don't know mm-hmm. like so it's like you know granted the day after beyonce we can all go back and watch it we can all say this is great like you know they unfortunately like i put it like this legendary performance right people talk about some people's performances legendary mm-hmm. back then you know you had to attend the concert right yeah. so you know one one thing is super legendary one of the most legendary concerts you ever hear about is Jimi hendrick Jimi Hendrix at, at uh, um, Woodstock, right at Woodstock, yeah. And, and you hear about it, but it's like, man, like right now we can all pull up, be on our phone. So I don't think that just gives gives her the edge. That's mm-hmm. just to me like a, you know, to me a prisoner of the moment type of thing. Like, granted, it was a lot that went into the performance, and we see that, and you know, we feel connected to it. But I think also on the on the flip side of it is this, um. You know, granted, we love these things from a from a black point of view, mm-hmm. right? So, um, but a lot of times I look at people who judge these things as this. Um, I don't, I can't take everybody's thought process into full consideration when they judge Beyonce because I don't feel like they're fans of complete music. Exactly. So, did you watch the rest of Coachella? Right. You know, did you see the weekend's performance at Coachella? Did you watch all, like, have you but, seen enough to really give a good judgment? Yes. 
I have. I, not, not, not talking okay, about I you, the rest. but I mean just everybody who's commenting. Like, have you seen, do you actually go to concerts? Right. Have you seen Janelle right. Monet perform? Have you oh, seen all yeah. these people perform who are also great right now? Or do you only go out to a concert when Beyonce and Jay-Z perform and to you that's the greatest thing you've ever seen? Do you listen to music or do you just skim, <laughs> skim through, through it? it? And, and see, and that's the thing. I, I've been to a Prince concert. I've been to several Chris Brown concerts. I, I know you have. Yeah, like, like, I know we're not, we're not yeah, we're not yeah, questioning you. No, I know, you. but I know, but this is why I'm saying, like, wow, she be and be like, God damn. Like, no, you know she, I mean? no, she does yeah, her yeah. thing. She does her fucking thing. Like, mm-hmm. she, hell, I've been playing that OT Genesis song. <laughs> she getting to the money. She, hey, look. Hey, G, that, hey. And, and really low key. I, no, Dion say prisoner of the moment. Yes, I'm sorry. I am a prisoner of the moment. You, you definitely are. And that getting to the money <laughs> shit, that might have just. He, you know, he need I, to put out a remix with her. Joe, I watched that video at least twice a day. I'm sorry. <laughs> I watched that shit. That shit was cold. But I think you you touched on something, Dion, important with. I think everybody like in the generation that they grew up with just think the shit that they saw was the greatest. Oh yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. From music to sports, like to if you talk to old, you talk to old heads, they like some will be like, we don't know why y'all discredit Will Chamberlain. Like he averaged fucking fifty, mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. like, but Mike, but like no, he averaged fifty, and yeah. they just can't get off the fact that yeah. Will averaged fifty, and you motherfuckers mm-hmm. ain't honoring it, right? And right. so I mean, that's just like you know, with our, our general, I I never forget. I tell people the story all the time. This is about about seven eight years ago. We was hooping at the gym. Uh, I took one of the little shorties back to the crib, mm-hmm. and this was when Little Wayne was at his apex. When Little Wayne, I'm Lil Wayne. When, Lil, when Lil Wayne was like Little Wayne, right, like right, 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 the man. And I threw on some Jay Z. I'm like, man, y'all listening to the goat? And they was like, nah, that's Lil Wayne, fam. And I and I almost like stopped the car in the middle of sixty third and, and, and normal. Like, excuse me, y'all can walk. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like each generation, or you talk to you talk to young guys that come in the gym now about basketball, and you know, mm-hmm. you're gonna get like the heated Curry's arguments the, it, that yeah. LeBron is the greatest. But I know what I saw with my own eyes, and that ain't <laughs> the case. But you know, each generation will have their favorite, and will swell up and down to their person from their generation is the favorite so like with beyonce right now like you know right. when it's all said and done she could very well go down as the goat because of longevity right but like you know for this generation especially the, the women they are going to fight for her to say she's the greatest entertainer ever and for oh. like our parents who saw mike jack mm-hmm. who saw prince mm-hmm. they're gonna be like oh please right right no offense to the queen <laughs> but they have no but I, I can understand that too though i, I definitely understand that because like us we think no cartoons will ever be better than the cartoons we watched growing up compared to these kids now you can't it's tell true. them about their cartoon man please jordan will fight you but yeah i i, I would love to find somebody that was really out here because one thing you had that money when them niggas was touring yes. I, I would like to see someone who saw the jackson's victory tour mike off the wall tour and thriller tour mm. and see what that person has to say you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. they, they can see this stuff now. And I, I would I would just love to see it. Because if you hear, even if you hear the historical music figures talk, the random um, people who've seen different artists. Um, I'm trying to think of, of a person who, who kind of transcends, right? So have you ever heard anybody that's seen uh have you ever talked to anybody that's seen Luther talk about a Luther concert? Mm-mm. Talk talk to them about a Luther concert. Because Luther didn't dance, Luther didn't sing, but they'll tell you that that, that nigga's voice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was like nothing you ever heard. <laughs> yep. And you look at it, you're like, yo, like, you know, I think all of that kind of means something. They talk about him being just a showman. Mm-hmm. Him coming out dressed the way he was dressed and all of that, like yeah, you know with the sequin shirts, yeah, and shit. you know sequin shirt, sequin jacket, you know. Same thing with like a fucking Wayne Newton or some shit. That nigga ain't been in Vegas forever for nothing. Oh, Even though I never well, ever. Let's say say Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 if, 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 if you look at Queen concerts too, you know, yeah, Freddie Mercury was with yeah, the shit. Them, them shits was, you know, it was next level, and I I think it's just a lot of artistry that you know people. You know, we we essentially should appreciate because a lot of artistry is really just the one thing that we don't give credit to us 
as kind of listeners is that these people we talking about studied all the great. True indeed. You know what I'm saying? They studied all the great. Them. So they can, I can add, imagine they fucking can James up. Brown performing. Pick See, up. and that's somebody else we haven't even brought up. We ain't brought the We ain't brought up James Brown. Greatest entertainer of all time. Can you imagine a James Brown concert with that band? Like he has he definitely has a a claim to the to the throne. I can right. But I, I, I dig it. I dig it. I mean, this yeah, just goes to show that you know, just being black is wonderful. Example number one million twenty-eight. <laughs> on the real, oh, right. we just got it when they yeah. come on the music yeah, side. And we we it's we creativity. so versatile. We can do so many yeah. things. Yeah. Unlike our other counterparts, <laughs> who try to do covers <laughs> for September. Oh my! God. If we could just throw our um, not donkey of the day, but our um. Asshole of the week. <laughs> it's a young Taylor. I ain't listened to it. It was that bad. It was that bad. I, it was I, that I, bad. I, I, no way. It I was. It, it was the the vocal version of Karen's potato salad with the raisins in it. Oh yeah, my I god. Yeah, you know, to me, I think I personally feel like it was an an intentional uh, attack uh, on Black America. Uh, uh. Because for her to go in the studio and to think that would be acceptable, oh, and for those white people who were with her to listen to that together and to put that out to the public, that was an attack. It was. That was a, uh, an attack to distract us from something else because I personally felt offended. I think I said on Facebook this morning, if she would have said the N word, I would have felt less offended. You know, let me let me let me shout out. Let me shout out Bradley. Yes, I'm gonna tell you why I'm shouting out Bradley. We we've given Bradley shit forever for forever for just having all these kind of people in his space with just thought processes just questionable. <laughs> and I looked at his stuff. I've seen people people have berated Taylor Swift about this song for weeks. For weeks. Well, I won't say weeks, but just it's a week's worth. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I look up and I see Bradley status, and I see all these people. They their their avatar appears to be black. Mm-hmm. And they like it's not that bad, and I'm like, and I was like, I see we got a lot of hummus eaters hummus. on this status. Oh, oh. We got a lot of hummus, hummus. eaters here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I just don't know. I don't because when I first saw that, I said this Maurice White would not have allowed this to happen. He, he, would, he would not have turning us. over in his grave. He he would not have allowed us this to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. But it just goes to show black people like going over and beyond for no reason to, you know, like pity white people. No, you tell that's that shit was terrible. Black people always it's always you listen, there's never a shortage of somebody shucking on shucking. social media. <laughs> Still digger. Still digger. Still digger. I'm not black. I'm OJ. Oh, man. Shucking. Well, that might be my word of the week. And yes. Um, there was another situation you brought to my attention that happened in a, in a Detroit in the, suburb. Yes, in oh. the Detroit suburb. What, what was it? Royal Oak? Is that? Oh. I don't know. Forgot the name, exact name of it. Hold on. Let me... um. Skedaddle. Let me do my scrolls here. Let you, let you do your scrolls. Let me do my scrolls real quick. Because it, I, 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 I'll, I'll get people um, kind of kind of here. Um, a man was um, a Rochester man, Hills. Rochester Hills, suburb of Detroit. Shout out to our uh, some of our Detroit listeners. All three of y'all. Yeah, I got a couple. I got a few cousins up there, man. Shout out to A Mal, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to, shout out to Reese. Reese. I'm about to say shout out to Reese. Shout out to Reese. Shout out to my family, the G. So, yeah, there was a. Um, so, the story goes like this, people. There was a black teenager. Um, he had missed a school bus in Rochester Hill. So, mm-hmm. since he missed the bus, he was like, I'm, I'm going to remember the route that the bus takes and mm-hmm. walk to school. He got lost, and your next question is going to be, well, why didn't he just pull up on the cell phone? Well, his mother took his cell phone because I'm assuming that he did something. He was on punishment. You know, no. good parenting. You don't got to beat your kid. Just take what is real valuable to your kid, which is the phone. So, unfortunately, this was the wrong time for him not to have a phone because he was lost trying to find his way to school. And as he was trying to find his way to school, he was like, I need to stop and ask for directions because – I'm lost. Right. So he looks at the neighborhood. He already knows what's 
what day and age he lives in. So he sees a house with a neighborhood watch flyer or sticker or mm -hmm. poster in the yard. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, if there's any house that's safe enough for me to knock on, it would be this house. So he knocks on the door and apparently the white lady starts screaming who yeah. answered the door like, stop so trying to rob me. You're house, trying to yeah. start trying to break into my house. Now, I'm not a criminal. Mm -hmm. I may know a few from my, um, my dealings in life in the, you know the greater Nateville area of the South Side, <laughs> but there's been no breaking and entering where they knock Not first ever with actually, a book bag. Actually, actually, I hate to be this guy, but that's what they do in my neighborhood. Yeah, they knock to make sure there's nobody there. They ring the doorbell. Oh, like, that's cute. The, but uh, he, he, here's <laughs> the thing: but you you left out one key detail. Mm -hmm. And what's that detail? They had they had the ring. Doorbell. Yeah, they had the ring doorbell. So she with was the able to see him on video. Yeah, she mm -hmm. was able to see him on video. And she's doing this yelling. As she's yelling at the young man, the husband comes down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even you. doesn't even really gaze the situation or anything. And um just grabs a shotgun. He grabs a gun. And the little boy sees him grab the gun and he's running. Hauling he takes ass. off hauling ass. The man shoots at the boy. Luckily for the boy, the safety was still on the gun. Oh my god. And the boy just ran off and hid somewhere and cried. The police pulled up and they went to investigate the the parents, mm -hmm. not the parents, the um the couple, and they they arrested the guy. Now, um, what's different in this situation compared to others that have um, flabbergasted the black community was a white head of a police department who was completely dumbfounded at the reaction of the white couple and he was a white man and i read his words in the article i'm like oh mm -hmm. he seems like he's really upset but then to watch the video he just couldn't believe it that this couple would immediately grab a gun and not actually hear that the boy was lost and give him directions to the school unbelievable unbelievable i mean there's, there's nothing to say about this like this is reason number a million and 28 on the negative side why it's hard to be black because your child <laughs> could be simply trying to find directions to get to school and could almost lose his life. Like the, um, the, the, sheriff's, the sheriff's department of Oakland County, the sheriff said, your son almost became a hashtag. And the worst part of this was the, um, the mother. She even tried, she was praying to give the, the white couple the benefit of the doubt until they showed her the video footage from the ring camera. Oh my God. And they showed, and they showed everything. She was like, Oh, so this, they were racist. So this was their thinking the whole time that my son was trying to rob them. And he clearly was yelling, I'm not trying to rob you. I just need directions to school. I, you know. Oh, my God. It's like I'm not numb to it, but I'm getting to a, a very dangerous spot in my life with racism, bro. You know, and it's just like. It's to be expected. It, th there you go. There you go. You know, I, you know, if you ever been around older people from the South, or you know, you got your family got some ties to the South, and you wonder, like, man, like, you guys are like too. That's too hardcore. Like, you know, f the white man. I don't, I don't care about it. You know, we we might feel a certain way, but they're like, no. You know what I'm saying? Like completely. Every like, okay, George Jefferson. You know what I mean? Archie Bunker. Those types of way to the left and way to the right. No in between. And, and, and low key, you can see like why they felt that way. Like, I don't know if we just had to get to a certain age and experience all the bullshit. But now I'll be like, okay, I can understand why. Why granddaddy Big James felt like that. I don't, I don't think we had to get to a certain age. I, I, I always feel like, I feel like for some reason we, a lot of what people have brought up by here you know quote unquote in the north is everything people wanted to assimilate so bad mm -hmm. and people kind of wanted to exist you know kind of in the same space as white people mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying people want to exist in the same space and, and when you want to exist in that exact same space a lot of times you get to that point where you you may feel like you're equal you know what I'm saying you get that feeling you feel like I'm equal we're just people and the thing is you'll get into a place like chicago 
and you'll be in your comfort zone neighborhood, which is probably wherever you're from, whatever, and you feel a certain way, you feel like, okay, here I'm comfortable, mm-hmm. and you kind of, your lens get adjusted because you think like the white people who come here, or you're not really thinking that the white people who are in my neighborhood, they know where they're at. Right. But the same shit you do in your neighborhood, and granted if it's white, if it's a little mixed, whatever, but once you go to that real white neighborhood, and I'm not talking about just Wicker Park White or Lincoln <laughs> Park White. Once you get to that real, the real white, one, not the hipster whites, right? Like you know, like you know, like on on this road trip, I, I, we stopped a place and it was you know they had those signs on the down the road. Once you get outside of Chicago, one of the signs said, "Imagine if your first responder was an armed citizen." Like you know, and I was just thinking, like, man, where we at? I already know what they're gonna be on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, like if you driving down 57 trying to leave Illinois. Yeah. And you get off uh, somewhere and you go into that McDonald's. Me oh my good gas yeah, station. Yeah, right. You ain't got to make it. You get them far. side eyes. Right. When you go into mm-hmm. McDonald's and you know they ain't serve no black people uh, in a week. Uh, right. In a week. <laughs> and you know, you you really feel it. So, I, you know, I think a lot of times we lull ourselves to sleep on how really racist the country is. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's a weird dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the crazy part about the situation with this young boy is this. Um, the thing, I, I, of course, I looked at the case. I said, okay, I need to see what's happening. Um, the guy who shot, he's 53. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a retired lieutenant of the fire department of that city, which one lets us all know. Uh, I repeat, he's he's a retired lieutenant of the fire department of that city. So, fire department uh, people do not get convicted of crimes. <laughs> <laughs> they he, they are firefighters get convicted of crimes less than the policia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's gonna request a jury trial. Um, and I fully expect him to walk out. Easily. Um, however, right now he's actually sitting in jail. So though it's interesting to piggyback off what MP said, they are really trying to pile on to this dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the the judge pretty much he gave him a, a bail of fifty thousand, but he told him we're not taking ten percent in this case. Yep. <laughs> we need the full thing. Right, we need the full thing and you know, he's gonna sit in there, he's got another hearing on the twenty fourth, so he's gonna be in there at least another week. Um, you know, so they, 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 they going at him, um, which is interesting, but they, it's a shame. That's not the norm that we're actually <laughs> shocked that they're going after him in this situation. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, you know, this is just another example of why it's hard to be black in America. I saw, uh, I was perusing Twitter a good word. one afternoon and I saw uh, a photo that kind of made me like, damn. We really in a fucked up situation. Mm-hmm. So they kind of had this graph that's like a, it looks like an odometer. Mm-hmm. And the red shows how long we were in slavery. Right. It's 246 years. Yeah. The yellow shows how long we were dealing with like blatant segregation, blatant yeah, Jim, like, Jim Crow. So like 1965. It, 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 well, they put to 54, but I honestly think huh? 65, 6, 70. Yeah. Mind, what, but right. well, for right. this chart, was they said 54. Right. I guess Brown versus Topeka was what they won. But oh, my God. That's 89 years. Honestly, we can add a, an additional eight, nine, additional 10 years, to be honest. Mm-hmm. No, right. 64, Dr. King got killed in 68. I, I uh, always let's just say a hundred years of segregation. Yeah. I, I, I always say this at least has to go till they stop killing our leaders. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, okay. So go go ahead. We'll go with sixty eight. So let's just round it up to a hundred years of segregation. Mm-hmm. We've dealt with being quote unquote not blatantly segregated, less than slavery and segregation. Easily, easily. easily. We only. I, I told people, black people, we are young in this country. Our age. It was young. If you go from sixty five to now, what's that? Fifty three. We fifty three years old. That's mm-hmm. young. That's my mama. Listen, brother, brother Dick Gregory. He 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 talked in his book, and I, I talk about this book because it was some real life lessons. He said, he said, black people always compare ourselves to different different ethnic groups, mm-hmm. and he said black people love comparing ourselves to Jews, and he said. 
I think he said when we do that, we don't take into account how long the Jews have been free. He's like, we have not been free anywhere as long as the Jews. At all. And, at all. You know, it's it's like when you look at it and you say, man, you know, we comparing ourselves. We we working with a limited amount of time. And, <laughs> see, this is what get me, bro. Like, no offense <laughs> to any other races. But the Holocaust lasts from what? Like 39 to 45? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and, and we could just go from when we just three fifths of men. Right. And you know, and not to make light of the Holocaust. Not at wanna, all. I don't not want nobody all. when we get not famous to try to bring us up to use against us. But yeah, like slavery was like <laughs> like two hundred plus years. Like what the fuck? Um, like, I just don't I you know whatever. Man. You you know you know what's interesting. Did y'all see the clip this week of the lady who I believe she's trying to be a Supreme Court judge who they asked her, did she agree with or, or so she oh, said, yeah. I forgot who she was, but y'all, I'm sure y'all are fine. But the woman who they asked her, does she agree with the Brown versus Board of Education agreement? Yes, I seen and, that. Yeah, she skated around the answer and the congressman was like, answer the question. And she was like, I can't answer the question because I don't want to go against this my superiors. And he's like, he's like, I'm asking you, is it right? And she just would not say. She, I told you. Well, you know what? And people only make that claim, only say things like that when they think they own shit. I told y'all, watching that King documentary, boy, Martin Luther King said, Martin Luther King said, when I was in Mississippi, I was straight. But the thing is, he said it would be 200, 300 people, angry mobs, hollering. And we know what they were. We mm-hmm. know why they out there. Right. I come to the north to Chicago, and it's 10,000 in the mob. And then when there's people I'm sitting down to talk to, they feel a certain way, but they're not overt with it. So right. I got to worry about the 10,000 angry mob. And then I got to go ahead and sit with a mayor who I know is racist, but he's still playing the, oh, I'm here to help you out type bro. Right. And, and that's when, um, that's around the time MLK was like, you know what? I might have sent my people off, y'all, because I'm up here, and they asked him, uh, well, you, you got something good with the housing, you know, uh, Mayor Daley, he signed a bill with the uh, fair housing, and they're like, why aren't you happy? He's like, y'all really think I should be happy about this? And, you know, his guys were like, no, we're okay. You know, then someone jumped in and, uh, and like, started talking for Mark, and I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? And <laughs> because the Martin that people celebrate, Mm-hmm. And, and, and I don't want to circle back too hard on MLK, but the Martin that people celebrate and the Martin that they tell you to celebrate, uh, it is different. Like when you really look at Martin and you say like, and the people tell you like, yo, how Martin was towards the end. Mm-hmm. And it's not just like the end, like people be like the end, but Martin was always that guy. He He really didn't change, but he got to the point where he was like, yo, I'm fed up. These people still don't fuck shit with me. You know, they mm-hmm. still don't fuck shit with my people. The 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 weird part about MLK, and, and this is always the funniest part, but, you know, the government did kill Martin Luther King. Like, that's, at this point, it's fact, but they just waited so late to tell us that none of us really care now. Mm-hmm. But that's, I kid you not, just look up the shit, you'll find it. It's, it's all out there. Mm-hmm. But essentially, at this point, it's like, you know, what they say, what, what's the joke? I forgot who said it, but they was like, the same people who killed Martin, the same people who gave they him a holiday. holiday. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And they, they control the public narrative about it, even if it's through people who look like us, right? So they'll sit there and they'll have all these people come out and say, Martin was about this, Martin was about peace, mm-hmm. shit like that. But it's like you look up and they're like, nah, Martin, Martin was really about, ki- he was kicking up shit. Yeah. But he knew also this one fact. And and this this may fuck a lot of shit that people say up, but Martin knew we didn't have the firepower. We don't. We didn't at that time have the guns to go to war mm-hmm. with the police, white people with guns. We just didn't have it. Mm-hmm. So I get it that you know people automatically put X over my do, but Islam also w- it was something totally different that they were doing. Martin knew. If I fight, it's just lambs to the slaughter mm-hmm. because all these white people got the weapons. Too much. They can roll the tanks down, so they had to do it that way. Which makes sense. Which I mean, makes sense. Yeah. 
you know, yeah, and another no balls thing, to the wall for no and reason. another thing too to address Martin's attitude toward the end of his life. I mean, it's just being an adult. How I thought at twenty five is different. How I think now at thirty five. Yeah, right. and that was the same thing with him. Like you know, he died at thirty nine. You know, when he got into the movement, he was twenty one, twenty two. Mm-hmm. You know, you twenty one, twenty two. You full of life. You think if I do, if I do things this way, life is gonna work out for me. If I love this way, I'm gonna find a wife. All women are made of gold and honey, <laughs> and all type of just the, the greatest shit. And then you get to thirty five. It's like man. They sold me a fake dream in college. I got student loans, <laughs> and these hoes ain't shit. And it, it, these are the realities that you deal with when you get when you live life. Yeah. And Ooh. with him, I'm sure he was like, "Yo, like no matter how hard I try, they are in power. Yeah, and buddy. They are not letting that shit go. And, and on you, top you of that, you seen him with them squares, them, them later pictures. He had a Man. square in every picture. And because he knew, he had a square he knew in every they picture. was gonna murk him. Like how you wake up yeah. every day knowing that you gonna get murked, and that's what his friends were saying. That's what his people were saying. Like man, Martin, yeah. you were already. Man. He said I he mean, was. He was already. He said they. He was already talking to us to put us in play because he know he wasn't gonna be around. Right. That's some crazy shit. Um, another another interesting thing. You know, it's so funny we switched from from Martin to to Ratchet, but I, I I'll just tie. I'm it with it. it. I'm I'll, with it. It's all I'll it's all black. It's I'll all just, black history. I'll, I'll just tie the end because Martin. You know, I I feel like. The real attack on Martin came when, when when they start sending Coretta them audio tapes and him banging him other women, him oh, getting yeah. greasy. It was like yo, they was just on pure bull, and and I'm gonna segue that to Tristan Thompson. Oh, oh let's from, go, TT from Martin to Tristan Thompson. My boy, he was a assaulted. no boy play special. My boy was sexually assaulted. He got caught on camera, out here, out here. Mm. Um. I mean, the one incident was from when? October? October. October. So, okay. October. Then he got caught again, or allegedly. I mean, this one ain't on video, but the, the models say just in March he was getting it in with her. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. Does anybody have anything to say about that? I really don't have much to say. I don't have, much, I don't have no sympathy for either one of them. Uh. I don't have much to say. I don't care. Would be hey, number man. one. Um. <laughs> hey man, I'm gonna say this. It goes down in the green room. That that bro. It looked like a setup. Now, now don't don't get me wrong. He probably initiated this whole thing. But from the video I seen, he's motorboating. He a girl got a head between his lap. He tongue kissing another one. It, it's a lot going on for a single man. I don't care. You single till you marry. You single till you married. That's a lot going on for a single man, and the flesh can only take so much. That, that shit just and did be, you see that? Like, oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, but have, did you ever see the chick? Her Instagram and stuff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, you know, I've been following. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot who I was talking to. But, you know, I, 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 you, know you know who pointed me in the right direction yeah, for yeah. it. I mean, the, the the thing is this though, and 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 this is just this is just something that we always say about life. And and the thing is, I know this is a, a popular topic with women, but mm-hmm. the here, here's the thing: a lot of women, because I saw a lot of everyday women weighing in on this, and they felt like this deep connection, and you know, had a lot of lot to say about this. But Tristan Thompson, you know, he, he just signed for ninety million. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and I'm not saying money's an excuse or whatever. However, the thing is. The way you live, the way people live life is is very real. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, when you're that guy, the, the calves are just how you put it. They're rock stars at this point. Yeah, you know Ch- they're world champions, right? And then he dates the Kardashians, mm-hmm. so now he's famous. But that also low key that puts a mark on you. Mm. If he was dating, you know, randomly, I'll just throw a random black actress. He would not be as as wanted but that puts that mark on you. So now his followers up, and women, you know, equally women want to say. I hit I, I hit the Kardashian I, man. I hit I, I, I hit Chloe nigga. Yeah, you know I took him. You know whatever whatever the case may be, because that automatically gives them fame. That's why that lady is negotiating apparently a six figure bombshell interview, mm-hmm. and somebody's gonna pay her that money for this interview. And it's like, you know, Tristan, you know he he did him, and I just look at it like you know, I mean I don't know what to say, and and, and the age old thing. 
your grandmama said it. She might have used different different language, but you know, you're as, as faithful as your options. <laughs> Oh shit! Right. Yeah. Let me hold on. Let me put this in. You better preach your word. My iPhone <laughs> notes. And, 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 and I always say it like this: Ooh, as, as crazy as it may sound, that women women heard that shit and they frown their face up. But I'm gonna tell you this: if all these rich niggas or you know whatever women want to put on display, rich niggas whatever, if they all came at your woman, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm gonna mm. just be real. If my woman came up to me and said, you know. Chris Brown and Tank came up to me today and tried to holler. And I'm going to look at I'm going to say, it was fun. It was fun. Ooh, I, you know, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I understand. You know, I understand. Like, you know, I, <laughs> I get it. I was there. I, I mean, that's really all I can do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can say, hey, we got this time. I can say whatever I want. But I don't know if what I'm going to say is going to be enough. I don't know. And see, I had this. You know, I told a young lady, you know, if you're in a relationship and the man of your dream comes up, Will Smith, Denzel, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't expect you to stick around. Right. You know what I mean? I don't expect you to say, nah, nah, baby, I, I love you too much. Because if, if Rihanna comes and say, Fresh, I need you to join the Navy. <laughs> I'm throwing my sailor cap on, Jack. <laughs> it's been, I don't care if she takes me on a one-week fling. Anchor down. It's going to be the best one. You better you better take me back. <laughs> you better take me back. Oh, oh, you can't. But, yeah, man. I'm going to a dally here. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where – So yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, I. It should be levels of faithfulness expected for certain. Come on, come <laughs> on. Just, come you know, on. We just be, if we being, if we keeping it a buck, here, a buck, a buck means a hundred people. Uh, if we keeping it a hundred, Chloe Kardashian should not have expected Trish and Thompson to be uh, her Grant Hill, if you will. It's just she's she's. I mean, to just be a hundred, like I know everybody's like, oh, look at Trisha, but she's dated the worst of the worst. Yeah, she she's dated a dope fiend in the mm. Odom. She's dated French Montana. French Montana come behind everybody. French yeah. Montana is a cleanup man. He just when you're on a rebound, French when a, a famous woman is on a rebound. Expect French Montana to be not far behind. They call him a seagull in the animal kingdom. <laughs> he's he, I, you know, and I bet he's the ultimate. Like, hey, like you want to have a good time? Get get your mind mm-hmm. off things. The next thing yeah. you know, you know, she giving that sloppy toppy off Ciroc. You know, sloppy toppy, right in in the guest room in Puff House. Because like, <laughs> I never forget, man. I only watched one episode of the Kardashians, but it they were in the Hamptons. And I just remember French Montana just walked in there with his shirt off, and I was like, "What am I looking at? What's what's <laughs> happening?" And but yeah, man, uh, yeah, and yeah, that was a gym there. That, that should be certain levels of certain faithfulness. Certain levels, of faithfulness. yeah, yeah. I mean, I you you right, you right. <laughs> I, I, I oh, that was know. deep. Y'all throwing some gems tonight. I, if motherfuckers ain't listen to this, baby, baby, baby. I don't know if work was this rough that got me. Between sick. that and you only as faithful as your options. Woo! What? I feel like a blind Buddha. Amen. I'm still sober, people. I ain't had a drink. Amen. I'm still sober. Oh, but, oh, when but we next get to week, Chocolate City. <laughs> Oh, when we get to East Coast Wakanda. Oh my God. Chocolate City Keep Fresh us in your friends. You know, anybody that's been to DC. Mm-hmm. If we have any DC listeners out there, we are coming. <laughs> Prepare the royal baggage. <laughs> oh, we touched down, baby. I'm staying at the Waldorf story. <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> man! Dion, I'm saying, why you stand there, fresh? Oh, I'll be in Georgetown. No, don't, don't mind me. I'll be. <laughs> be like LeBron, zero dark, dark thirty when you I touch it, down. Baby. You know it, baby. <laughs> I'm not. Stadium status. I can't. 
I can't do fresh today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the Waldorf. Because <laughs> fresh is just, you know what? Maybe I, you know, maybe I need to detox from everybody the week of leading up to DC. Man, you got to. I'm telling you, and just you got to. Like Lords of Keys, like the only thing I'm planning on going to is my uncle's birthday is Friday. We going to like some jazz or restaurant for a minute. I'm, I'm going back home. I'm staying in with my daughter this weekend. Mm-hmm. And after that, y'all leave me alone. See y'all at the airport. It's been real. Okay, um, so. As as we said, I, I hope y'all are following the HBCU confession, confessions. Oh, at this go, point. Here we go. Uh, we with the shits. <laughs> in, in and out with in this with a bang. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm laughing before we even get to it. Why, because, why do we, we even have the because, HBCU because, confessionals? <laughs> because it's at this point. It's kind of like a sticky point. But, you know, I feel like these are real things that happen. Mm-hmm. And, and people don't want to say it, right? Mm-hmm. But here's, here, here's one that I feel like definitely happened to. You know, I would even go so far as to it's happened to some of our listeners. Oh, this, shit. This is, okay, so y'all, y'all ready for this one? Go ahead. Okay. Me and my boyfriend have been dating for almost three years now. Mm -mm. In the beginning, he was amazing. He became a Q and lost his damn mind cheating. Mm -hmm. I want to leave him, but the sex is too good. Like the sex is crazy, insane, amazing. But I want to be happy. What should I do? (laughs) (laughs) Um, these are college relationships. I'm assuming. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because he just because he just crossed Q. Mm. Um. Look, sweetheart. Can I call you sweetheart? Yeah, you can. I can call you sweetheart. Um. You know, take it for what it's worth. To be quite honest. Um. You're in college. You're not really looking for a relationship. I'm telling you, you're not looking for it. You think you are, but you're not. You're not. You're not. Listen to me. You're not looking for a relationship in college. Um, he ain't the one, but he's going to be the one for right now for you because we can tell you whatever we want to, mm-hmm. but you already told us to answer what you're going to do because you want the D. The D. And you're going to sit on the D. The D. The D. And it's, that's just what's going to happen. You it's, just ask that question just to hear it out loud, but right. you're going to fuck. Right. Yeah, as, as Bernie Mac said, the D. The D. The D. <laughs> and, and with me, the way I'm saying it is, Look, you already know what it's going to be like. You got a Neo Q on your hands. You know he's going to be wild. The first time they play Atomic Dog at the first party, he's going to get butt naked. So, like Ann said, live for the right now, not for the tomorrows and and further alongs. Because right now, keep getting your little shot in now and then. Just become the Wednesday chick. Just tell him, hey, I know you're going to be out here. Don't forget about the little people. <laughs> <laughs> you might don't as well tell about don't, me. don't don't forget who was rubbing uh Vaseline on your ass during the process. I mean it's it's rough, man. It's rough. Yeah. So you know. I I I, I don't I don't really have much advice. I wish you the best. Uh be, because the thing is the, the truth is you young. Uh, full of spunk. You young and, and the thing is like you know, if you want to accelerate yourself into adult decisions, right? Let's say, let's say, if one of my adult friends asks me, I'll say, "Listen, you got to make a list on what's important to you, and depending on if she a Robin Givens chick or not." And 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 that's my slang. I use Robin Givens for you know those are all your little trifling friends, your girls that keep it all the way real, not y'all girls that lie to us on the internet, right? So I, I tell you, I think I, I'm gonna tell you what my Robin Givens friends would do. Mm-hmm. Or what they would advise you to. I know them that well. They would say, girl, keep getting your back blown out. Mm-hmm. And while you're doing that, you can search for you a good nigga. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you know, just keep getting your back blown out until that good nigga get caught up and learn your insights. And, you know, at that point, you, you know, <laughs> you, 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 cut, you cut big fella go. Cut, cut big purple and go. go. Big purple and go. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Out dog, <laughs> live your life, sugar. Yeah, cause you you don't. Know, one thing about college, I, I'm gonna say, I'm glad I lived my life in college. I wasn't one of them people like, oh, I shoulda, coulda, woulda in college. I I live, baby, 
And I'm glad I'm not because it's only a one-time thing. You know what I mean? I think everyone's record is pretty much clean slate out of college unless you just – I don't even know. Could we even say someone was really out here in college? Could you say that? I mean, I, I, like, people that took home to I, yeah, I think you got. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think you can. There's, some, there's yeah. always people pushing the limits. Put it like this. Oh yeah, I put it like this. I mean, there, there's a girl I know, and 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 when we took a tally, when we sat down with the record books, you know, yes. she she had you know hit like seven, no, eight guys that were connected. You know, all connected. Mm-hmm. So I, spider I, web, I, spider yeah, web yeah. is always bad. Yeah, and that spider web ain't even that big. It's just you know. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, best of luck. Wrap it up. <laughs> right. Right. You're still gonna hit. Let's do what you do. Easily. Last lap. They giving them away at the uh, rec center in the health department. Yeah. So it should be no excuse for you not <sighs> having the durexes. Don't so, use durexes. So. Oh God. <laughs> um, Put that out. Yeah. There. So. Uh, any anything else you fellas want to add? Uh, you know. Any anything. You know. Oh yeah. I forgot. Friday. I'm excited. J Cole drops. Oh I'm yeah, he does. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. J Cole, oh. J Cole's back. Uh, well, after you listen to it, let me know. I probably won't, cause you you got this dislike for J Cole. I do, and, I'm and I don't that. know why. It's like he's like the Tim Duncan of rap to me. Like he, I, I just don't get it. Like I, he's not weak at all. Yeah, I respect this game. He can rap, but it's it's just not something I I flow with. Like I don't I don't, I don't know, man. It's just one of those things with me. Like maybe. It'll be something different that I'm not used to that you can say, hey, fresh. At least listen to this song. You know, somebody told me listen to Headbuster today or something. Headbuster, I love it. Headbuster, I'm a Headbuster, yeah. Yeah, they say you got a song called Headbuster. I should go back and listen it's, to it. I think Jeezy on Headbuster or either. It's, so it's a, it's a mixtape guy called Truly Yours, too. It's only yeah. five songs. Yeah. Can you come out? Years, years ago, ago. Oh, yeah, years but you know, like people him. was telling me like you think he's so boring, just go listen to that song. Yeah, but people still gonna feel it because like the, the thing is like some people listen to rap for different reasons, mm-hmm. and if you're not really listening like to like get your bars off or like relate to somebody's life, then you're probably not gonna like J Cole. And some people just feel like that, mm-hmm. you know. I'm I, I get it, you know. You know, some people will listen to rap because they want to put hair on their chest. They want to feel like they was cooking in the kitchen. I get it. <laughs> but, yeah, trust me. Uh, yeah, but Headbuster, Headbuster, yeah, I mean, I think Headbuster's on my phone. But yeah. it's, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. so um, you at, you got anything yet? No, no. Uh, actually, I don't have anything actually. Okay, I, I got some stuff. Lord. Shout out to Thank You Chicago, man. We, we really moving and shaking. We getting to the point. Well, you know what I'm saying? People are really looking forward to the next couple parties. You know, um, we had over 1,500 RSVPs for our party next week, uh, the Bounce and Break Your Back Party at Promontory with uh, Commando and DJ Chip. Yeah, that DJ Chip. He was the DJ from around the way, that DJ Chip. Uh, and and our event for Avengers, um, we're doing a pre-screening uh, Thursday for Avengers. You know, that's sold out. We've got people coming up to us like, Joe, can we be a part of this event for our media and we'll cover you? I think it was a kid in high school, and we said, yeah, of course, you know, no problem. You know, you want to want to look out. We can look out for each other, you know. Uh, but we did get a random comment that I felt was so funny. Like, on our page, it was a white guy who was like, pre-screening this Wednesdays. You should take this false advertisement down. Oh, shit. Man. And I'm like, oh, oh, you, you you mad you ain't get an infinity stone or something, brother? What's wrong with you? I ain't, but see the growth in fresh. I just let it be. I, I usually would have reacted, but I didn't even react. So yeah, shout out to Thank You Chicago, me, my boy Matt, the girl K Moon. And uh we got a chopped and screw party coming up too. I'll get further details. Just go on our um IG page, T Y Chicago. Thank you, Chicago. Quick pub. Okay. Yeah. Dance Harden. Oh, oh God. Okay. Oh, so, dance. <laughs> well, thank you, good people, for listening to us. Uh, the good brothers and the No Four Play Show. We appreciate your support. Yes, yes, we do. Always. True, thank indeed. Thank you so much. And I, and and to all the people who was talking cash money shit. Yeah, we back. We back in the rotation. I don't want to hear nothing else about us. Uh, we back.
motherfucker. <laughs> and you know what? On that note, no foreplay. We, we out. out. No foreplay.